Yes, thank you. So, my name is Dr. Asit Raz Mandari. I'm one of the trainees. I'm ITR 22, uh, currently working at Calderdale and Huddersfield Royal University. Uh, today, my topic is abdominal pain. I have chosen this topic uh, because it's one of the most common presentations in uh, emergency department in all age groups. And my curriculum number is SUP1. So, starting today, our objective in this abdominal pain would be know the general anatomy. We'll go surfacely towards the anatomy of the abdomen. We will uh, talk about history and examinations, uh, how to take the history and uh, examination pattern. We will talk about possible differential diagnosis because there are lots, uh, loads and loads of uh, diagnosis we can make in active abdomen cases. Uh, some clinical cases and presentations in ED. Some of them are really simple and uh, direct, but some of them are tricky and may need lots and lots of sophistication. Uh, our management and treatment plan uh, with the take-home method. So let's start. Uh, I'd start with epidemi I have to start with epidemiology, and I have already told that it is one of the most common presentations, which accounts for 5 to 10 percent of the uh, patients. As I was starting my uh, duty at Halifax, I had seen around five to eight cases in that pending and uh, seen list, which were uh, an acute abdomen or abdominal pain. So it is one of the common patients. Uh, most of these patients will be discharged from the emergency department, but a small percentage of them will be referred to the respective team, mostly surgical, but can be medical and gynecological as an acute abdomen. Up to 80% of uh, patients are discharged with non-specific abdominal pain and are often pain-free within two weeks. Ranging from uh, it ranges, as I told you, children to geriatric. Coming towards the anatomy, it's a space between the uh, thorax and pelvis. It contains all the digestive organs, uh, important vessels like aorta, IVC, uh, travel through. It contains organs too. And it is protected by fascia, then muscles, and then skin. So this is the abdominal regions and quadrants. Uh, most specifically, we use uh, regions, but sometimes some some persons or sometimes we use quadrants. And in uh, regions, uh, it is divided into nine parts: uh, horizontally by uh, midclavicular line and uh, vertically by transpyloric and transverse. And it is divided into four quadrants uh, centrally. So uh, coming towards the regions, uh, these are the organs or parts of the abdomen uh, that are uh, present in every every quadrant, uh, every region. So in uh, right hypochondric, we have leader, uh, liver, gallbladder, right kidneys, small intestine. In epigastric region, we have stomach, liver, pancreas, duodenum, spleen, and it goes on like that. How to approach the patient? Uh, being an uh, emergency uh, medicine trainee, uh, we always have to approach a patient by ABCD approach. Then uh, most of the presentation in acute, uh, acute abdomen or abdominal uh, pain is pain management. Then uh, we go to the focus assessment. Then we go towards the continuity. So we have various uh, pain assessment tools. Uh, uh, we use facial expressions, uh, physiologic parameters like heart rate, respiratory rate, BP, also lack of specificity and sensitivity. We have verbal descriptors, we have numerical, these are the verbals that uh, patient may describe from no pain to the worst possible pain. We have visual analog scales where people can uh, look and uh, tell how the pain uh, scale is. We have verbal numerical rating, most commonly used in uh, uh, emergency department. We ask uh, the patient to describe their pain ranging from zero to 10, and zero is no pain, uh, five is moderate pain, and 10 is the worst pain. And we have combined verbal and numerical scale. Um, I think we have a scale present for it also uh, in the emergency department. So differential diagnosis. It is always important and one of the challenges for emergency uh, clinicians, especially in older adults, immunocompromised patients and women of childbearing age. And differential diagnosis is wide, it varies. Uh, key to narrowing down potential diagnosis lies in systemic approach. An efficient at, uh, comprehensive history and thorough examination may give us a clue of the differential diagnosis. Uh, causes include medical, surgical, 
gynecological obst uh, and obstetrics, intra-abdominal and extra-abdominal alignment. Although a specific diagnosis may not be done during referring, it, was, it is important to provide differential. Coming towards the differential diagnosis in various quadrant of abdomen, uh, these, are, these are very uh, common and uh, presentable diagnosis. We can see in the picture. Always, uh, we have, uh, while making the differential diagnosis, we always have to come towards the immediate life threatening condition or remember the red flag sign. So, life threatening, uh, some of the life threatening conditions that I want to mention today is a ruptured uh, triple A, appendicitis, diverticulitis, ischemic bowel, bowel obstruction, bowel perforation, strangulated hernia, pancreatitis. Resistitis, topic pregnancy, diabetic ketoacidosis, myocardial infraction, and abdominal trauma. So, uh, pediatric differentials uh, may vary from the adult one. Babies and toddlers, they cannot vocalize or localize the pains. Uh, hence, uh, careful observation of the behavior and examination findings are really important in uh, babies and toddlers. They can give appendicitis torsion of the testis, mostly uh, after the puberty, uh, intersusception, uh, malrotation of volvulus, and small bowel. Coming toward the examination part, we have uh, divided into six, uh, it into six categories. First one is the inspection. Uh, we uh, look at the abdomen and uh, describe how the abdomen is. Uh, from, uh, sec secondly, we have palpation. We have superficial palpation and deep palpation. Uh, we have percussion and we have auscultation of the abdomen, mostly done for the bowel sound. Uh, we have rectal examination. If required, we have to perform the per-rectal examination and pelvic examination, mostly in females. In investigation, uh, radiological uh, imaging uh, looks really important in acu uh, cases of acute abdomen. Plain a plain x-ray abdomen can be ordered. If needed, contrast study with barium of upper or lower GI series should be done. Uh, USG uh, can be helpful in uh, various acute abdomen cases. If needed, CT scans should be performed or help of colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, or endoscopy should be taken. In hematology, uh, we have to uh, rule out uh, various uh, kind of uh, differentials in uh, acute abdomen. So we have to uh, send various uh, <laughs> bi bi biochemistry lab markers like serum amylase, lipase, uh, lactate, if we think of sepsis, uh, AVG, a pregnancy test in ectopic pregnancy, and urine dipsticks to rule out uh, UTI. Uh, complete blood count might be needed. Sometimes we always forget, if it's a surgical, uh, surgical condition you're thinking of, blood grouping or cross-matching may be required, and a renal function uh, test may also be needed. Coming towards the management, we always uh, perform the ABCD assessment, and if uh, there is a problem in one of them, we uh, tackle it then and there. And the golden rule, uh, since the presentation is pain, always prescribe analgesia and reassess the pain. And if you think of a surgical, uh, if the surgical intervention is required, you have to ask for the last meal intake and send for the blood grouping in cases of suspected uh, requiring emergency surgical. Best to keep NPO if the if suspected the need for surgery until surgical team. Pain assessment tool promptly helps in directing towards the effective uh, analgesia required as it can uh, vary from mild to moderate and no pain to worse possible pain. Drug we used <laughs> we use to uh, uh, as a, as an analgesia can be non opioid analgesic agents, can be NSAIDs and can be uh, weak to strong opioids. So non-opioid analgesic agents, mostly you, we use a paracetamol. It is an effective analgesia for mild analgesia and fever reduction. And it's safe in children and adults. Uh, it, it has antipyrotic uh, character too, and rectal and IV preparation are available, but should be avoided in active liver disease or any liver uh, condition. And hepatotoxicity is rare with ingestion less than 10 grams in 24 hours. Second one is NSAIs. 
Uh, they have analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, can be found in oral, IV, rectal, and tropical preparation. Uh, it inhibits COX, decreases synthesis of prostaglandin, a key mediator of uh, inflammation. So it, uh, it has uh, quite an inflammatory effect too. Uh, Non-selective anesthetics inhibit COX-1 and COX-2, resulting in multiple benefits. So these are the uh, adverse effects of anesthetics. Most common is peptic ulceration. Uh, second one is renal impairment. Bronchospasm is uh, noted in small percentage of the asthma patients. And inhibition of the platelet function increased blood loss following surgery. So these are uh, some COX-2 inhibitors, uh, some anesthetics, COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors with their uh, GI toxic, uh, toxicity level. And the risk of the toxicity uh, level is decreased uh, uh, when proton pump inhibitor or mesoprostol is added to the ibuprofen. At last, we have opioids. Uh, it is the first choice when the pain is moderate to severe. From five to 10, we, uh, our option is to go towards the opioids. Morphine, like, uh, it's the most widely used opioid. It comes in a 10 mg per ml uh, ampule preparation and is prepared in one mg per ml titration. It reaches big effect when a few moment, uh, minutes uh, when given IV and effects for three to four hours. Widely used opioid mostly for the severe pain, but it can cause nausea, vomiting, along with respiratory depression. So uh, second one is codeine, but uh, it is not that much useful. And it uh, compares real, uh, really poorly with paracetamol and ibuprofen, even uh, doubling the dose of uh, codeine from 30 to 60 mg. Uh, third one is tramadol. We don't mostly use uh, tramadol around here. I have not found anyone using tramadol, but uh, they say that they use it in surgical units. And it is widely used opioid with maximum dose of 100 mg every four hours. Much better safety profile than other opioids uh, due to its less respiratory depression. We have fentanyl, it is a short acting with a uh, brief action, provide analgesia for 30 to 45 minutes, thereby uh, giving a role in procedural sedation. And we have ultra short uh, ultra uh, acting opiates, having been developed such as uh, remifentanyl, uh, uh, mechanism of action is less than six, uh, six minutes, the duration of action is less than six minutes, and fentanyl about 10 minutes. Coming towards the common adverse effect of Opiates, adverse effects uh, tend to be related and metabolized in liver, liver when excreted for, uh, through kidney. Sedation, hence uh, respiratory depression, can cause nausea and vomiting. Histamine release uh, causes pruritus and mild hypotension. A slowing of the GI function leading to, uh, leading to constipation probably and urinary retention. And not forget the respiratory depression. So we have various cases. Uh, cases can be straightforward and can be tricky sometimes. So let's discuss the case one. It is a 28-year-old presented uh, in emergency department history of a left flank pain. On examination, renal angle tenderness is positive. Urine examination shows plenty of RV. And uh, USD shows hydronephrosis. What could be the diagnosis? Renal colic. It, it is a straightforward case. and uh, It actually happened to me. <laughs> it is a renal colic. And we have case number two. Uh, it is a 16-year-old female presented in emergency department with uh, right iliac posa pain uh, with, and fever associated with nausea and vomit. On examination, rebound tenderness is present. Uh, her uh, full blood count <laughs> or FBC shows WBC is raised. Uh, USG uh, shows probe tenderness is present. What these acute appendicitis. Yeah, the, uh, these two are straightforward cases. Now coming towards the third case, a 36-year-old male presented in emergency department, history of epigastric pain since six hours. He describes pain very severe. On examination, he is pale. His heart rate is 125 beats. His BP is 75-40 mm. He takes alcohol on regular basis. No any medical illness or drug history. How would you manage this case and which investigation would you like to send to this patient? Again, ABCD, start with ABCD management, then yeah, always start with directly to the pain management because he is having severe pain. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, seen the relevant investigation, including blood grouping and cross matching BP because BP is low. Maybe there is a perforated bowel or something like that. You're really good, Sami. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you say, like you said, for every every ABCD assessment, we go through the circulation and relevant investigation. We do the pain management, and we sent a chest X-ray in this patient. Yeah. This was the chest X-ray. Yes. Yeah. All of this is perforation. We can see that. Yeah, you can yeah. see the gas gas under the diaphragm. It was a case of pupil. And we have last case. It is actually uh, the case I found in HRI here while shadowing at Huddersfield uh, Royal Infirmary. This was the case. 24-year-old uh, female presented in emergency department, right-sided upper quadrant pain since two months. She was treated as UTI by GP, but she doesn't remember the antibiotics she took. Uh, it improved the pain, uh, but the pain increased since two days. It is known to grow in prank pain. Uh, she also complains of false smell in urine. Uh, there is nausea, but no vomit. A lab, uh, lab value shows CRP of 42. Uh, urine dipstick shows uh, triple plus. Leukocyte, uh, uh, urine dipstick shows uh, triple uh, plus leukocyte, double plus blood, and uh, single plus protein. How would you operate? Other, all things are normal. That's yeah, we have to this we have, we have to, to go, go to the ABCD approach, yeah. pain management, take the history. Uh, that might be that might be either acute pyelonephritis, I mean ascending pyelonephritis, or, or there may be any other underlying cause that can be ruled out after in investigation. Yeah, first, uh, looking at the presentation, we thought that it, uh, it could be a case of renal colic, but uh, we performed the CT, but uh, there was uh, no, uh, we performed USC because she was of a childbearing age uh, woman. And uh, there was no hydronephrosis, nothing suggestive of uh, renal colic. So we went uh, with the diagnosis of pyelonephritis in this case, because there is false male in urine too. And she was uh, prescribed with uh, pain management by uh, PCM. And uh, entamycin uh, was added as her, uh, loaded as a broad spectrum antibiotic and uh, disposed to the medical assessment. Uh, one more question, Asis. Was there any CMT on no. examination? Okay. No. Her only positive uh, signs were CRP was two, and uh, there was triple leuco plus leukocyte on urine dipstick, double plus uh, blood, and uh, single protein, and nothing positive. And it was quite hard to dispose her to uh, ME reaction. So she she was not on the periods though she was not breathing PV because of blood in the urine. Uh, no, her last period was uh, a week back. Yeah, I mean she doesn't have a UTI, just leukocyte, is it? There's no nitrites there. Yeah. Yes. Funny enough, urine dip doesn't show any HCG uh, results over there. What's the HCG result like? Yes, pardon me. Beta HCG in the urine is it positive? No, it's not. These were only the positive, posting, uh, positive we findings. The PID as well, based on what has been mentioned so far. Yeah, it can be. Uh, like uh, we everyone, yeah. the abdomen can derive from one to the other and needs uh, continuous reassessment. And various of investigation might be there. Every well, case. That is, that is uh, urinary, uh, that is pyelonephritis, is complicated. They treat several times with a, a urine infection, then um, complicate gradually and goes to the probably to hydronephrosis. Then uh, she needs surgical review. Of course, uh, need to review the antibiotics and see the, if the GP send the the urine uh, culture uh, and to see if the antibiotics that uh, uh, how she was treated was working with this kind of uh, if it's uh, anything else in the blood cultures you know in the sorry in the urine culture sometimes antibiotics doesn't work and then get py pyelonephritis mm. then she need to review all these urine tests 
and see and then um, then um, uh, surgical review. It's in a best interest to have a imaging proper like CT scan. Uh, whether yeah. we can go for CT KV non contrast versus CT abdominal pelvis, I think she needs one. Yeah, but uh, we ignored the CT as uh, she was of a child bearing age. Well, if if it's in the best interest, you can always discuss with the radiologist. If it's like acute abdomen you're looking at, we can always um, discard that kind of, uh, um, uh, how do I say, um, like, it's it's not it's... ideal for all to like, just have to follow the guideline, but basically you have to go look at the patient accordingly. You have to come to a diagnostic conclusion where you are. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Sir, for your input. Uh, and we uh, really had a, a differential diagnosis of pyelonephritis in this patient. And maybe in the uh, medical assessment unit, uh, they will uh, look for uh, further uh, in this case and plan for the CT and everything because we successfully uh, transferred her to the CT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ashish. Now, I, because it's still lacking uh, no, parameters in investigation because uh, any abdominal pain, the assessment includes history, examination, some sort of you know, laboratory tests and uh, imaging, as you mentioned in the previous uh, uh, talk. So imaging can be ultrasound, x-ray, endoscopy, laparoscopy, uh, any sort of stuff. So we, if we want you the fourth component, then the assessment is incomplete and the diagnosis might not be obvious. Because in this case, I can't see any imaging done, you know? We did, we did uh, USC, sir, and it was did, completely not. Did you do some ultrasound, some sort of CT? Uh, no CT, but ultrasound. Ultras, ultrasound was normal. Yeah, ultrasound were normal. But, but then how I, you can say it's a pyelonephritis if the ultrasound is normal? Because the ultrasound, I would have said, should have seen shown some swelling of the kidney or pylo, pylo, what you call pyloris or pelvic of the kidney or some sort of thing should be there or some obstructive stone. I don't know, uh, you know. Um, so yes, sir. It it was quite a tricky case. Hmm? Uh, that's why we had to uh, assess her more, and we hmm. sent her to the medical assessment for further. Uh, we mentioned uh, those things on the handover. That she might uh, need to do. Okay. It's so, my, so I, think, I think I think they they took it um, easily the referral, but they usually this is something which they have to actually uh, rule it out while in A and E. Whether this is a urology emergency like um, pyonephrosis or something else, there is no way to prove it, right? Yeah, it's so not unless easy. you have that sort of imaging, there is no way that just the medicines can take it. Because I have seen nowadays that medicines are very careful about taking these kind of referrals. Questionable pyelonephritis cannot actually be taken unless pyelonephrosis is ruled out. If it's a pyelonephrosis, it's a surgical emergency, it needs to be seen by a urologist. That is where the effect of CTKV at least is needed. I know the reproductive age group part of it is there. However, it's in the best interest of the patient to have that imaging than not to have imaging and get suffered. But again, CRP just 42, is it? Yeah. That was in Halifax. Was the antibiotic, Mr. J. So it was it in Halifax. Halifax? Huh? Yes, sir. Was Halifax. He was with antibiotics. Then. Oh, Halifax is a good hospital. It's a good hospital, you know. Yeah. So they, <laughs> our hospital, they, 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 <laughs> Doncaster, you would have been struggling to admit this lady. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. I was shadowing uh, one of the junior doctors, and she, she already handed it over. So yes, who admitted? Day. I know Halifax. Who was the junior doctor with you? It was Bry. Oh, I might be. No, I won't know him. He's new here. I think that she started a month. I, I know I know Andy and, um, you know, Amjad and uh, Dr. Dar and Vimal and, you know. Yeah, we, we met uh, Dr. Dar, Dr. Amjad's address. No, fair enough. So, you know, so so they admitted it. But I think um, when you admit people, so the first question you need to ask, uh, why you are going to admit these patients in the hospital? Do they need anything? That's very important. And if you come up with a negative question, most likely these people are well to be discharged. But in this situation, 
I mean, I can't see any anything which uh, which really dire that she need to come to the hospital. I don't know. Might be pain. I have no idea. Yeah, it was pain. Uh, if it's a big it's pain, fine. then as 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 Suraj is saying, then she need a CT KGB because ultrasound might have just just to focus on the kidneys. They have not come to the uh, what they call junction, uh, visaco uteric junction. And uh, you know the critical UV uh, would have shown it, but I think in, in Cotterdale uh, uh, we we used to do quite often this intravenous urogram. You know? Described it that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Did not do they... CT because of the hmm. reproductive age group. No, I, I don't know whether they use now or not. Surely, when I was working there 12, 12 13 years ago, so we used to do intravenous urogram. Yeah, me, hey. me, Halifax is a woman's hospital. That's why uh, there were more. Uh, I don't know. Okay. No, no. Halifax is the lot of big Ghani department, is it? So the first person uh, initiated uh, the IVF was in West Yorkshire, was in Halifax. Uh, he was a, I don't know what his name. He was very long, tall uh, gynecology doctor. Fair enough. Accident. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the input. Uh, can we move? Did you happen to chase his patient later on? Just to uh, see what I, I wanted to. I wanted to. It uh, sounded it was... like they might need an MRI because when you are saying like they are so against the CT scan, they couldn't actually scan this lady. If she is really suffering, she probably needs an MRI scan based on what you are saying. No, why the so why they don't do a CT scan? Why? I mean, the if you read the radiation, now uh, you know the Americans say. CT of the whole body scan gives you less radiation as the background radiation in Devon. So there's no much radiation. I mean, this myth uh, has been you know, debated. Now, medics, even they don't hesitate to give a CTPA to a pregnant woman. You see what I mean? If you ask medical people, oh, I have got a P, uh, suspected P in uh, pregnancy because D damage will be high. The first thing is, oh, give a CTPA. Believe me. In Doncaster, I don't know about it. They, they will tell you. I'll give a CTPA. So I think I think I think they should not persist with the old-fashioned. No, the radiation are dangerous. What I mean, these radi radiology radiographer, they come to resus and they do X-ray. They're not even more than one meter away. They are still working. I mean, they are walking about. You know, I mean, I, I should not. <laughs> I should not <laughs> advocate that. We should not care about the radi radiology, but but I think when the patient care comes in, when the patients are risk of getting harm, so I think a CT scan probably you know CT think, KGB. Yeah, would have I been, think Mr. Uh, Jinger, so I think in this case, maybe if the ultrasound had showed some maybe a little bit of dilatation, a little bit of hydronephrosis or anything yeah, suspicious, yeah, yeah, then right, we'll yeah. go for CT. But this mm -hmm. patient, like you said, Mr. Junior, it's not a very complicated one. So I think the ultrasound they've done, I think is good enough. And the patient has been admitted. Remember, we are A and E. Our whole, the main job of A and E is to stabilize the patient and move the patient on into the specialty for onward investigation. So I think in this case, the A and E doctors, they've done their best. And the ultrasound did not show anything serious that would request no i agree if they're using now. if so. they're using ultrasound in an incremental fashion that let's do the ultras uh, let's do the fastest let's do the ultrasound scan if you could see something ultrasound scan then let's move the ct scan if the CT, exactly some, if you exactly. if you could see something on the ct scan then then go for mri or spectrometry whatever or even uh, you know uh, cystoscopy and you know so i don't know i mean uh, you know where the thing will stop but again, you know, individual trust uh, department have their own little bit policy. But in Doncaster, uh, you know, the only um, uh, indication is that, uh, you know, they would insist to do a pregnancy test in young child-bearing uh, uh, women. But uh, they've never refused doing CTK UB at Doncaster. Uh, in my experience, they do, um, you know, go with no. CTK UB. And invariably, we will found some sort of stone obstructing in the ureteric system. Yeah. And the exposure of CTKUB, the radiological risk of CTKUB is just um, what every person will get. The number of radiation any human being will get in a year by just living in Europe, in UK, 
is equal to the number of radiation you get from CTKUB. So it's not massive. Yeah, the less radiation of the intravenous urogram, you know, there's a far less radiation as compared to the CTKUB. Uh, but there, uh, there you have to inject uh, uh, <clears throat> contrast. So I don't know, I mean, it, it, which is best, you know, they've got pros and cons, you know, so. Um, I can I can see that there's no abdominal finding written over here, surprisingly, Asif. Were you in front and what did you see? Like well, you said you were studying someone. What did yeah. you actually see? Uh, uh, the, uh, the thing is that I was shadowing someone and I was uh, planning to present in abdominal pain. Uh, that's why I followed uh, this, uh, this doctor. And I enough. took the input, input from her. I did not went in front of the patient or uh, seeing her uh, abdominal examination. But when I asked, the input uh, that she gave me and the results were like this. Well, you can always see the records, whatever he is writing, and that is, you see, it's a more of a learning experience. You see, you just came in. I understand that, and uh, just getting familiar with the environment. But having said that, there's always a buzzing thing in mind: what's happening with this patient? Regardless, if I'm not the doctor, if I am the doctor treating, what would be this case? Like, is it a differential diagnosis of acute abdomen or nothing significant? Because when I see in the examination nothing significant clicked on, like no rebound tenderness, no yeah. significant uh, flank tenderness, or no generalized abdominal tenderness, or yes, there was a significant tenderness and percussion, you know, that, that would give you an idea, because this is a basic one. I think uh, the, that was actually missing in, in, the, in the presentation itself to give any idea what should have gone in. Don't you think? Yeah, I think, I think so. Thank you. Thank you for your input. And I think I have missed uh, something in this patient too, uh, as it was other patient. And I would have uh, looked at the EPR, but uh, I don't have access to EPR right now. So I cannot ask anyone to <laughs> just give me your EPR and I will uh, look at this kind of thing. When I get my EPR, I'm planning to follow this patient. And she also uh, put it to the favorite so she can follow the patient. And if I happen to know anything more about or what they did uh, the MEU, I will uh, surely be happy to, happy to share uh, all the information. Excellent. She might have just um, you know, ruptured luteal cyst. You know, I don't know. Anyway, so it's a, it's a good stimulant uh, discussion. Excellent, yeah. So we have I next think case. The whole purpose of Ashis was to kind of meddle with our thinking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has succeeded in that. Congratulations. <laughs> Well done, bro. You did very well. Just, Lovely. Uh... Can I just add, though? Can I just add, please, let's remember to do the pre, uh, pre and post MCQs. They really help, especially for those preparing for exams. So let's try to be adding pre and post MCQs into all our presentations. But thank you so much. That was a beautiful presentation, bro. Okay. Uh, can we move forward because we have some slides? Of course. Of course, please. Uh, always, we have to at the red flag signs before discharging or, or uh, going through the process. And there are, uh, I have divided into two, um, medical and uh, surgical. I have taken it uh, from the EM, uh, EM beds, which we uh, use here at Halifax and uh, Huddersfield department. And it's mostly for the pediatric age group. I did not find it for the adult age, but uh, I, find, I find it relatively uh, really important uh, and it can be used in adult age group. So in the uh, medical red flags, uh, if the patient is of septic appearance, has history of fever, tachycardia, and looks generally unwell. In the respiratory system, if he is tachypneic, yeah, he has respiratory distress or is present in cough. A generalized edema, we always have to suspect the nephrotic syndrome. Significant dehydration uh, clinically, or more than 5% of weight, uh, weight loss uh, should be observed uh, importantly. Uh, uh, purpuric or petechial rash suspect of sepsis or meningococcal disease, if febrile. We always have to look for the jaundice. Uh, polyuria and polydipsia, we always have to suspect diabetic. And in the surgical red flags, always uh, look for the guarding, uh, percussion tenderness, constant dull uh, pain exacerbated by movements, suspect of peritonitis. Suggestion of uh, bowel obstruction, uh, mostly presentation is colicia, abdomen pain, villus vomiting, uh, resonant bowel sound. 
uh, if there is history of recent uh, significant abdominal trauma as it may lead to the spleen um, various organ ruptures like spleen and history of uh, recent abdominal surgery surgery present if there is uh, ir irreducible hernia uh, testicular pain should be considered mostly after uh, puberty and uh, there is a red current children patient disposition it is one of the most challenging thing for the any uh, doctors mostly in acute abdomen cases whether it be medical or surgical or gynecological way to dispose the patient or send send her home as we said most of them are going uh, going to the home so it can be difficult to decide if admission is needed for a patient with abdomen uh, we have to add up the low threshold for seeking senior help we always have to go and consult with, uh, consult with them if we are confused or we uh, don't know anything about it or we cannot go uh, to the any differential diagnosis in general if doubt exists refer to the respected team who may decide that uh, it is uh, prudent to admit the patient for observation especially like we did in our uh, case number 4 take home messages prompt resuscitation and uh, pro uh, provision of analgesia are integral component of management of serious abdominal pain assessment of patient with abdominal pain in the uh, emergency department depends upon the history and uh, examination detail history is important for making differential we have to always rule out uh, life threatening emergency we have to determine a site severity relationship character timing precipitating and delivering factors so grades is easy to rule out cardiac causes because it could be mi uh, radiological and hematological tests should be done to support the diagnosis always seek for the help when you are in doubt and remember the red flag i have taken my references five there is an interesting thank you i think uh, yeah uh, yeah she's i think a uh, very simple very good presentation actually acute abdomen uh, presenting this simple is very difficult i will say well done Uh, i think uh, you know people should take uh, you know leaf of from your book the model uh, to present acute abdomen on them sort of slides a really good presentation i think the main thing is in in abdominal pain as i said earlier there are four component of assessment history examination investigation and some sort of imaging so never forget uh, imaging uh, when you deal with the abdominal uh, pain patients and also this is a consultant sign off is a, is i think in elderly people if they come with the abdominal pain so always involve your senior consultant sign off mean that when you are involved in that sort of age group so always mention to your senior there i've got this patient 65 years old whatever 70 he's come with tummy pain and that's the finding so what you recommend am i am i doing right stuff okay just document the notes because that's one of the indication for the consultant sign off as well I I think I think pain is the most important thing in the assessment of uh, acute abdomen and the anatomy which you mentioned very important because mostly we think abdomen is from there to here no it's a big thing okay it start from the below the inferior uh, border of the scapula right up to the pelvic brain so it's a really you know a, a big big structure and mentioning in your presentation about the region the quadrant beautifully done topographical anatomy and you mentioned with the with the things differential diagnosis that slide was really beautiful very good i don't know how you make it it was really impressive so overall i think i think very good presentation i don't know is your first presentation or what but uh, a very mature presentation well done i i like it because i've done quite a bit of surgery so i like the presentation